Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Bowling, along with Jedid Ayabila, Juan Williams, Melissa Francis, and Tom Shalou. <laughs> it's midnight in New York City, and this is The Five. Fox News Alert, thanks for joining us on this special late night edition of The Five. It's no surprise here. Donald Trump wins the Oregon primary Republican side, picking up an additional 28 delegates. But the big question tonight, can Hillary Clinton finally stop Bernie Sanders in the Oregon Democratic primary? Sanders has upset Clinton, but in Kentucky, the Democratic battle is still too close to call. Although Hillary Clinton claim her camp is claiming victory moments ago on the trail, Sanders addressed his supporters. Secretary Clinton defeated Barack Obama by 250,000 votes in 2008. It appears tonight that we're going to end up with about half of the delegates from Kentucky. There are a lot of people out there, many of the pundits and politicians, they say Bernie Sanders should drop out. Well, let me be as clear as I can be. I agree with you. We are in to the last ballot is cast. And earlier tonight, Trump seemed anxious to get to his likely general election opponent. He tweeted, quote, I look so forward to debating crooked Hillary Clinton. Democrat primaries are rigged. Email investigation is rigged. So time to get it on. Now, Juan. Bernie, uh, it doesn't sound like he's getting out. We heard him say he wants to stick through, stick through uh, at least California. Um, he may actually beat her tonight in delegates, right? Not much. I mean, the, really, the delegate, the delegate thing is so interesting to me because it's a, it's a, you know, basically they both get a split of the delegates in Kentucky. I mean, this was a psychological victory, as Charles Cradhammer said, for her to break the losing streak that she'd been on and finally be able to say, I won one, because mm -hmm. otherwise May was going to be a total dump for her, right? Okay, so she won one, but even if she'd come in a few votes behind, it was still going to be a split. Bernie gets a few more uh, delegates out of Oregon. But what you got to realize is now Hillary needs less than 100 more yeah, delegates right. to, to seal the deal. That's the big news, I think. She's getting very close. I would add one thing. I know we want to get around the table, but the big news out of the Democratic Party tonight is the fight with the Democratic establishment trying to shut down Bernie Sanders and punish him for what happened at the Nevada Democratic Party meeting last Saturday at one of your favorite haunts, the Paris uh, Hotel. Oh, yeah, or across the street at the uh, the Wynn Hotel. Is that right? That would okay. be one of my favorite, more, <laughs> more favorite. favorite. Or um, your style. Well, listen, the, the superdelegate situation it, it, is that Juan's right in a couple of maybe next week, maybe the week after, Hillary will have enough to lock down the number. As yeah. long as she keeps the superdelegates, they can still be swayed to come to Bernie Sanders' side. Right, they can, but this is the Clinton, so you got to think they're bought and paid for. I mean, they're in the bag. They have been since the beginning. Um, it's not even a contest. To go back, it was kind of fun. So I went back and I looked at the New York Times from the day that Bernie Sanders announced his candidacy because this whole thing has been such a surprise. You went back, it's funny. So he's kind of introducing himself to everyone. There are people all around the country who had no idea who he was. Um, he said he had quite an uphill climb. He only had $4 billion at the time. People were saying he was going to have a hard time raising money and then the very last line he says be careful be careful of underestimating me mm -hmm. which turned out to be the case i mean i remember we were all joking like did the clintons pay this guy to get out there and run against <laughs> her because a socialist who was older than her and they made that in all the articles it commented that he was older you know they were saying get, did the clintons put him up to this and now you're going no no they definitely yeah. didn't because it's turned into a nightmare it's turned into a movement on, on that side as well trump says he's the outsider he's going to win this yeah. side bernie sanders says i'm not getting out because Look at the crowds. Look at, yeah. That's a massive crowd in California. He's inspired a lot of people. I think the nomination for Hillary is not the problem. I think the actual election is the problem because a lot of these people that are really passionate about Bernie Sanders, especially the young people that are showing up, the uh, academia, I know a lot of people in academia that really love him, those people aren't necessarily going to go out and vote for Hillary. In fact, a lot of them can't stand her. So I think right now, you know, I think the superdelegates will stick with her. Yeah. I think she's a political machine. I think she will win the nomination. But I think then her goal is going to be, how do I get these people that really don't believe in me and were really passionate about Bernie Sanders to somehow be convinced that I'm the answer and be inspired to come out and vote for me. And I don't think running against Donald Trump is enough of a reason for those people to come wow, out for Wow, I think they really are afraid of Donald Trump. I mean, they, they're, they're demonizing Trump. I mean, it's like as if, if you were running against Tom Shalhoub. 
who would I vote for? That's <laughs> easy. Come on, right, man. right, right, what? right. That's, That's not hard. <laughs> it's easy I to can do take that. this guy. It's easy. Huh? <laughs> but this is the nightmare scenario for Hillary. Remember, what was it six weeks ago? Everyone was talking about what's going to happen to the Republican Party when the the person who gets the most votes is disenfranchised, and they're going to, you know, they're going to nominate someone else. That was the nightmare scenario for Republicans, but it was not going to happen. Okay, and it and it is not going to happen. But it is happening to Hillary because she her nomination was never in doubt. Mm -hmm. But we are watching her lose and lose and lose. And every time she loses, people like us get on and say, well, it's fine. She's sitting pretty. She's going to get the nomination. And voters are saying, what is going on? So yeah. it's terrible for her. You know, one, uh, uh, anecdotally, a couple of days ago, I talked about some friends that were diehard Democrats who have now jumped over and said, I'm not only voting for Trump, one of them actually wants to work for Trump and, uh, as well. Um, NBC had a poll out today showing it broke it basically was a, a statistical tie Hillary up by three points nationally however inside that the internal on that poll showed independence break for Donald Trump mm -hmm. 44 to Hillary Clinton 36 she's got to worry about this does she not that would be a worrisome fact if that's if that poll proves to hold you know it's not just some freakly freaks thing at the moment it would be poll. really worrisome I mean clearly she still has a tremendous advantage with women and we can see that that's still at play and everybody's worried about how Donald Trump deals with the women issue the New York Times story all the rest but if you're saying to me independents are mostly women if you're saying to me the independents are now going to break for Donald Trump that's news and the other part of that another internal on that poll had the the uh, gender gap Three points closed. Trump closed it by three points. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, wait, with, but, with still, but still in the still, 60s or something. Still wide, well, and it but, flips but, the but other way, points. too, though. Yeah. The gender gap. I mean, it goes the other way, too, because men break very, very hard for no, Trump not over Hillary. Not yeah, nearly. No, it I was exactly 20, the same. It was points. like 53% of the men that were looked at were yeah, going it's for 70, it's close him to 70 and then for the 30% for Hillary. and... So that means a 20 point lead, right? But, you know, Barack Obama won by more than t t 10 points, like 15 points by, for, for women uh, in 2008, didn't he? I don't know if that's exact numbers, but he won by a lot. And I think he won by 10 points in the following election. So women have always trended Democratic. So, I mean, all Trump has to do is close the gap a little bit, and he's doing okay. Stay right there. Stay right there. Hang on there, Juan. Meanwhile, earlier on Fox, the DNC chair explained why she thinks a prolonged Democratic race will not hurt the eventual nominee. I don't think it's hurting. On the contrary, actually, I think that if you look at the exit polls and the, uh, the, the, the questions asked of voters as they're coming out of our most recent Democratic primaries, they've enthusiastically said that the primary has actually caused them to be more energized about our, our candidates and more likely to be supportive of whoever our nominee is. And that is actually, you know, in stark contrast to what's happened on the other side of the aisle. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're two candidates beating the crap out of each other yeah. for weeks on end when the, when the Republican sits back and goes... All right, let me know when you're done because I got you next. <laughs> yeah. Don't you love when Debbie Wasserman Schultz uses, they're more energized, they're more excited. They're yeah. more <laughs> That's a good impression. <laughs> That's a good impression. You know, one point that Juan made that was great, though, is this idea that it is going to be the battle between the vilification of Donald Trump versus the apathy for Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to is like, do you hate him enough mm -hmm. that you're willing to come out and go vote when you're so apathetic about the candidate that's yours? It's a it's a legitimate question because on the Hillary side, they are really trying to go hard at vilifying Trump in, in a lot of quarters that works really well. It's also exposing the division within the Democratic Party, which people love to talk about the right and how the Republican Party is falling apart. And there's, you know, anti-establishment and establishment and populist and all these terms. And then and, and that's true. But you have the same thing going on on the left. And I think the longer that Bernie Sanders stays in and exposes the distinction between him and Hillary Clinton and exposes the fact that a lot of these voters Look at look at what's going on in Nevada. A lot of these voters are saying no to Hillary Clinton. A lot of people are saying we cannot vote for her no matter what. I know a lot of Democrats that are saying I'll do a write-in. I cannot vote for her. I absolutely refuse to. So I think the longer he stays in and highlights that difference, the more of a problem it's going to be for her because she's being forced to defend herself. She's not good at this. She's not a good politician. And she's having a really hard time appealing to the left. Even though she's had to tack left to appeal to Bernie Sanders' crowd, it's still not working. I must so say, I, I think she's going to really, have a hard time. I really don't understand this. It seems to me like initially you guys were like, yeah, Bernie Sanders, keep going. Or Bernie yeah. Sanders, the Clintons put him in this because he, right. he's so oh, weak. Yeah, day one, but totally. now, let me tell you something. Bernie Sanders and his socialist crew is a threat. They're talking about the violence. They're 
yeah. threatening the woman who was the chair of the Nevada Democratic Party because they don't like the rules. They're saying continue the revolution, continue the burn. Yeah. Big turnout tonight in California. And again, you see this kind of almost anarchist zeal on the yeah. part of Sanders supporters. Now, you're saying, oh, this means that there's this tremendous split within there the Democratic is, though, Party. ideologically, Let I me think. tell you something. This, the history books are going to write about this as a moment when the Republican Party broke apart, lost its principles, lost mm. its ideas. Mm. Or changed. Or evolved. Rebirth. Uh, I mean, Rebirth. That's, that's no, possible. There's no question that's possible. That, 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 the establishment class. And Donald Trump comes along as the outsider, and he changed things. I mean, yeah. the, the, another number today. The, the, if, who is the leader of the Republican Party? Trump, 58 percent. Paul Ryan, 39 percent. I mean, there, this is a changing of the guard. Well, that's what I was just saying to Jedediah. It is. No, no, no. Well, they can Let be, me just say. But, but, but you're, you're saying you're the saying Republicans a, a new are people uniting coming around in. Donald Trump, even if they don't like him. Yeah. It, no, I think that there's a push right now to get on the bandwagon. He's the winner. He's got the most right. vote. Yeah. He's the man. That doesn't sound like a, a breaking apart of the, the Oh, GOP. so why hasn't Paul Ryan endorsed him? Because he's an establishment class. Oh, he's that's what I'm out. saying. That's what exactly what I'm saying. It would, it would hurt him. Lost. I mean, I think Paul Ryan's not endorsing him because it would hurt Trump. What? The only, yes, absolutely. Oh, Mitch McConnell because hurt him? He's, because he is the establishment. Yes, establishment. Yeah. Donald Trump's, we're agreeing. Agreed. We're agreeing. Donald Trump's support is totally based on this idea that he's blowing up the traditional Republican Party that I think a lot of people are tired of because they've lost so decisively for so long. Well, uh, the more the establishment gets on his train, the more it hurts him. Mm -hmm. I think we're agreeing. Yeah. All right. Quick thoughts. Got to go. Rebirth. No, I think it's true, and I think Paul Ryan. You know, he's he's holding back. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know, it's better for Trump. Yeah. It doesn't Please. matter. It doesn't matter what Paul Ryan or Mitch McConnell say. This is what it's going to be written about. Is this is an election where the people took over and decided on we don't care sides. about endorsements. We don't care about what you have to say. We're going to vote for who we like. And no matter this guy, you know, Donald Trump says some crazy stuff. I'm not going to argue. But people are saying we would rather have this guy than this establishment nonsense that we've been putting in for years. And what have we gotten to show for it? They're willing to take a risk. Right. That's what I think is going to be written about. Got to go right now. Coming up, Bill Clinton breaks his silence after coming under attack by Donald Trump. Find out what Bubba has to say to the Donald when we return on this special late night edition of the 5 at 12, 12 a.m. <laughs> <laughs>